this emotional intelligence that everything in life is either a, a, a catalyst for growth or it's going to create the next limitation. If you're, you're going to be great, you have to be in, in proximity of greatness. We exist in this world not to not to better ourselves, but by bettering ourselves, we're actually bettering others. Welcome to Entrepreneurs the Playbook. And I am giddy right now. I think I'm on 1722 episodes of the playbook, but this is a guy that I've watched from afar for a long time. And we have been getting closer and closer touring around America at the number one inspirational, aspirational tour in America the biggest names, sometimes I can't even believe I'm sharing a stage with some of the people and the names, uh, but it's more than names, Eddie Wilson, CEO and founder of Collective Influence. It's more than the names, it's the actual impact. And, yeah. you know, I watch a lot of places where people come and go and they give a rehearsed, really colorful, entertaining uh, speech, but you change lives. And it's not just the people you bring in. I love watching you uh, speak and the things that you do to change lives and inspire people and to continue to have a relationship with people. Now, you have a podcast called Think Reality. You actually utilize a lot of mindset lessons in order to effectuate success in all the different things from you know real estate to coffee to, to influence that you have. Where did you learn the lessons and the stories that you have about how to have the appropriate mindset, the abundant mindset that you teach and impact so many with? Sure, yeah, I've got uh, an amazing uh, uh, growing up years, right? Like my parents are amazing. I had such a privilege of growing up in their household. I have two entrepreneurs for parents who were massively resilient. Um, and honestly, where I learned was in my early days, you know, I've exited over 123 companies now, and my passion is private equity and just constantly churning out these businesses. And, um, and it's been trial and error, you know, like, even though I grew up in an entrepreneur's home, um, you know, I, I didn't really learn until I was taken advantage of myself. And I really struggled in my early days, uh, got taken advantage of by some big corporate guys and just decided I wasn't going to. I was going to play that game anymore. I was going to play at that level. I was going to, it was going to be a catalyst for success for me. And so I dove in deep um, and began to create this path that I'm on uh, out of a lot of failures. Um, so I did have a great college education, had a great, you know, um, had great growing up years in my parents' household, but really it was the failures of life that, that brought me where I am today. And everyone goes through a period with those, failures to derive the lessons, the light and the love from those failures. But I have found that what we see outside of us, uh, there's some inkling of those things inside of us that others are mirrors of us. What were some of sure. the things when you were in the learning stage of your business before you got to the exponentiality of the success that were inside of you that you think either one attracted those type of situations, or more importantly, were the lessons that you needed to learn? Yeah, I, I think that uh, traumas in our life create the life lessons, and traumas either create uh, ceilings or they create catalysts and opportunities. And at a young age, um, I had two siblings that passed away. I had a sister that passed away and a brother that passed away. And my parents, with extreme emotional intelligence, helped me process the loss of siblings. And my mom would teach me gratitude through those moments. And she would talk to me oftentimes, like she would say, I understand you're hurting and you're struggling, but let's talk about the greatest day you ever had with your sister. Let's talk about the moment that you possess in your mind that was the most amazing moment you've had with her, or my brother. And, um, and so for me, what I was taught at early age was this emotional intelligence that everything in life is either a, a, a catalyst for growth or it's going to create the next limitation. And um, and so in the early days, uh, I, I had a company that I was exiting from. It was an unintentional exit. I actually was trying to raise capital because I had a big contract with Subway Sandwich Shops. It was an ad agency I had. And I needed the capital to actually like book the national ads. Um, so I went in and signed the contract and was sourcing capital. And little did I know is the largest ad agency in the world that was behind that capital. So when we got to the closing table, they said, hey, here's the deal. We're not giving you the capital today. Today's not going to go the way you think it's going to go. We're actually going to buy your company. 
And I said, well, I'm, I'm on a, a two or three year path to Rex that I'm not ready to sell yet. And they said, no, that's not how it's going to go. We understand how you're leveraged. You don't have a choice. And I sold the company for, you know, for quite a bit of money. And, but in the end, it was like, I left 20 or $30 million on the table because, you know, they, they played the game a whole lot better than I did. And man, I, I was just ticked off at the world. I was angry and uh, I was going to show them, you know, like all those thoughts you have. And I remember that they gave me 24 hours to kind of process. And they're like, we're going to meet back at your office downtown Chicago. And so we went back down the next day. And I remember driving back and I, and I had this like recollection of like my mom talking to me about the greatest day I ever had with my sister, the greatest day I ever had with my brother. And it just dawned on me. It was like, you know, I get the chance to do something that very few people in the world get to do. And that is exit a company and have a bunch of cash and shrink down time. I, they were going to pay me. I was getting paid a seven multiple at the time it was a you know it was a fair offer and um and i thought you know what that means that i'm going to take the next seven years of my life doing exactly what i'm doing in order to create what they're about to give me i get seven years of my life back what would i do with the next seven years of my life if i had i'm having this thought i'm driving into to work that morning um you know getting ready to sign the papers and i began to think through that process and it was like and I thought, number one, I'm never going to be in the situation I'm going to be in this morning. I'm never going to let somebody take advantage. I'm going to learn the space of M&A like no one else. I'm going to live this, you know, and I'm going to and I'm going to play at their level. Um, that was the first decision I made. The next decision I was, you know, made was like that I'm going to use this this uh, this for good, right? And my parents were always just a good catalyst for using what you have to make impact in other people's lives. So I made a couple of choices that way. But really, again, it goes back to those like losses. Like we either had the emotional intelligence to look at loss in the right way and step into the next opportunity, or it prevents us from stepping into it. And we, we look at it from a very um, broken vantage point. Yeah. And that perspective of finding the light, the love and the lessons, even in the most tragic situations, like losing a sibling, I lost my oldest brother when I was second year in law school. And I unfortunately learned those same lessons and uh, being able to pay the dummy tax for other people and help them with the directions that it took to get to where we want to yeah. be or better in order to level up. Uh, one of the things I didn't handle well in my young success that you did was success itself. Uh, there's a saying, you know, with new levels come new devils. And, yeah. you know, when I was able to rebound and make back uh, all that was lost and even more in a different perspective, um, I raise my awareness and still do today because as I reach new levels, uh, there are new devils, um, in this position, you have so many exits, so many great things in your lives as a father and a husband, as well as your health. And I know that you prioritize those as a non-negotiable, even when you're on stage and everyone is pawning for your dummy tax, for your knowledge and, and relationship capital, uh, but what are some of the new devils uh, in your life? Because very few people on earth get to the level that you're at right now. And it would be great if you could share maybe one of the new devils in your life that you're sure. uh, working through. Yeah, I love that. New levels, new devils. And uh, I think that I oftentimes wonder if the devil isn't really just a new devil. It was just a devil that was kind of like hiding and waiting for the opportunity to come out. Right. Cause I really think that financial. Ask, gain, ask Will Smith about that. Right. <laughs> yeah, ask exactly. Will Smith about that. Exactly. <laughs> right. So true. And it's, you know, like I always believe that, you know, financial gain is the ultimate revealer of who we really are. It doesn't really change you. It actually just shows it reveals what's actually deep down. Um, in my early years, I really struggled with arrogance and pride and, you know, that I, I believe that I got myself where I was. And so I came to everything with this, like, I created this and, and it didn't serve me well at all. It left, it left emptiness, uh, separation. Um, and then you finally get to this place to realize like, well, I didn't actually create any of this. Like this, this was all, you know, like th this is me, but it was created by, as a byproduct of everyone else in my life and everybody that contributed to me and everybody that poured into me and everybody that loved me. And, you know, and it's like, um, and I, I feel like that's been the journey I've been on for a long time. And I feel like I, there's the nuances of that, that change, you know, like when you, when you hit the next level and you, you, you know, you have the next level of resource available to you, 
I think the new devils are always, am I going to use that to make intrinsic good in the world and the people surrounding? And that's why we go so deep with our nonprofit impact others is, you know, we're in 108 countries today and I, I'm pushing really hard to continue to grow that because I think what it does is it's the counterbalance to like the, the bad Eddie, right? Like it's like good Eddie, bad Eddie. And it's like good Eddie takes what I have and makes impact on the world and makes people's lives better. And bad Eddie, you know, gets greedy and wants the next thing that everybody else wants. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I succumb to issues of social media and, you know, social chains and social will as well. I mean, I look at the, you know, my neighbor's Lambo and think I need a new Lambo, you know, it's like, but <laughs> in the end, you can only have so many cars and so many houses. And in the end, every single time you get the next level of whatever that is, it's always emptiness, but you change a child's life. You feed a child that can't feed themselves. You dig a well, you know, in Africa that give clean water to thousands of villagers that haven't had it in 2000 years. You know, it's like there's fulfillment in that and so i think that's the devil i'm fighting every day is like that 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 little devil of greed that just wants to pop up and be like eddie you deserve this like you take one for yourself this time you know um but in the end every time you do it it brings emptiness like there's no fulfillment in that yeah that's why i use time uh i know there's going to be some time during each day that bad david comes out uh when bad dave was around for days weeks months and years it had really bad results, uh, that emptiness that you talk yeah. about. But yeah. now that I leave it to minutes and moments, it's amazing how much good progress comes from good David. And I know there's so much great progress that comes from great Eddie. Uh, your book in 2021 talked a lot about uh, Titan leadership and uh, a great book because one of the other things that evolved through the success is the mindset, heart set, and hand set in your career is your own definition of a leader for you how has that changed uh throughout the financial faithful fitness all the successes that you have in a harmonious sure. balance how has your perspective of leadership changed it's it's changed a lot um in my early days leadership was about me stepping out me being in front me pulling everyone with me um i learned a great lesson um, I had bought a group of companies that had about 30 companies in it. We grew that from 30 to 86. And in 2018, I had 86 companies all running concurrently, thousands of employees. And what I realized is it true leadership is about me leading others to their greatest potential. I, I wasn't a CEO of any of those companies. I had 86 CEOs that worked for me. And to the degree that I could pour myself into them and get them to break through ceilings, um, I had the six, ended up having the success that I, I currently have today. And so for me, I always feel like there's really three levels of leadership. And in my book, I talk about, about really like seven principles that I learned by leading 86 of the most amazing humans on the planet that were leading companies. And I use a lot of history in that book uh, to point my, you know, to point out the things that I'm speaking about. But really, I feel like there's like three levels of leadership. It's like people, there are people that can lead themselves and we need to lead ourselves every day, right? Like I need to put my, my own self in submission every day. That's why I work out. I tell my, I tell, you know, those, those nasty habits, they're not in charge, right? Like I want to do something bigger with my life every day. So we have to lead ourselves. Then you can lead, then there are people that just lead followers. There are people that just innately need let, right? Like they'll fall in line. They just want somebody to say, here we go. Let's go this direction. But there's this like next level, which is like the leader of leaders. And a leader of leaders has to be absent of ego. And so when you see a bunch of people, you know, running around, especially on social media, and they're beating the chest and there's an ego coming out everywhere. There's always going to lack that next level of leadership, because if you truly want to lead people that are real leaders and have true leadership qualities inside of them, you have to remove ego. And I, I love uh, Holiday's book when he talks about ego is the enemy, because it, it is. If, if you want to get to the next level, ego is always standing in your way. And so for me, that's that's been the evolution of my belief in leadership is it's it's from, you know, in the beginning, everything's me. I, I, I got here right to um, everything is everyone else. And to the degree that I pour into them and get them to their level, then we all rise. You know, it's just it's been a, a big uh, evolution for me, for sure. Yeah. And in that evolution, you know, as I have watched from afar and now I've been blessed to be right there watching you and the influence and the impact that you have in a positive trajectory. Uh, I see you at a level of leadership that's 
more of an intelligent follower, uh, listening for what people need and then providing at your best capacity, the ability to elevate, to teach, uh, to bring the best out of others. Uh, and of course, mentor them, give them the dummy tax, the definite steps uh, that you need to take in order to get to where you want to be or better. Finally, one of the things that I see both in your podcast, Think Realty, and of course, the Aspire Tour. And if you're not familiar, by the way, with the Aspire Tour, uh, just go on social media, drive down any freeway, listen to any radio, uh, talk about a lesson in marketing and branding. Uh, you guys are amazing. But what I really think that you've done differently from all the other, what I call the, you know, the entrepreneurial seven, uh, which you know, we both have participated in uh, the seven. Uh, but more importantly, you have been able to really build a community. You know, I'm amazed. I stay all day when I go. I'm not in and out. Uh, I rearrange my entire schedule to answer questions be because it's the community that you built. And, you know, my mission is based off of community of people that want to help each other and know people that can help each other. And sure. nowhere, I've been doing this for a long time. I know you're in your forties. I'm almost going to be 60. So I've been doing this a long time. Nobody has a better community uh, than the Aspire Tour. And if you Thank really you. want to change, you, you know, it's good for a couple hours, you know, to be motivated by the biggest speakers in the world, but to actually be part of a community with the greatest leaders in the world, that's what you're going to get with the Aspire Tour. Um, you're developing an amazing community. What are some of the characteristics that you see are most beneficial for those people that have seen the social media, the postings, the billboards, the radio, the TV, everything, even the big long trucks uh, with the pictures on it? Uh, what type of characteristics uh, are you uh, portraying with this unbelievable community? Yeah. We we love the community, by the way. That's been the biggest blessing of putting this tour on is just the, the massive fellowship and the camaraderie that we have in that community. But what I see is we always start the tour the day that we you know have our event with purpose. We always lead with, let's talk to you about if you get a tip or you get connected or you get an idea today that takes you to the next level, that it's going to lead to emptiness unless you turn around and you make impact on someone else's life. And so we lead with our belief system, which is that we are we exist in this world not to not to better ourselves, but by bettering ourselves, we're actually bettering others. You know, it's like it can't be the end all. And so we always start with purpose. The day is kicked off with purpose. The second thing that you see in our stage is authenticity. The speakers that I'll always ask back are the ones that are the most authentic, the ones that are real, the ones that talk to you about the demons, right? The ones that talk to you about uh, the, the the next level and next devil, right? Like, and, and the people that we ask to not come back are the ones that are not real. You know, it's like in this, in this space, there are so many people that it's hard to know what's real. You know, like we see these great curated social media presences and, you know, um, great interviews and, and uh, it's really hard to, to differentiate what's real. And so as we sit backstage, if their message from the stage doesn't resonate with what's happening behind the stage, then we just kind of move on, you know? And there's some great people that we haven't had back and it's not because they're bad people. It's just because I want true authenticity. I want the, because the people sitting in the crowd feel it. They know if this is real or not. Um, and then, and then we give them access, you know, I know you and others have been so gracious with their time and we try to put them in close proximity. You know, it's like, if you're going to be great, you have to be in, in proximity of greatness. It's hard to watch it from afar and then emulate it. But if you actually are motivated by it, you, you see it, it's truly authentic. There's a real sense of sharing. And then you can put them in proximity to it. Um, it's easier to follow. And uh, and that's what we do with our Aspire for More program. We have a, a follow-on kind of product, which is really just a monthly, every every Tuesday night, we have a call and we bring the speakers on to speak to the people. And that community gets to continue to interact with the people that they saw on a stage. Um, and to me, those are the big differentiators. Um, and what's been fascinating is we haven't marketed, most of these groups that are out there with these business conferences, are marketing towards people um, with this message of greed, right? Like if you come, you can gain. If you come, then you can get. 
for us, our message is a, a pure inspirational message. We talk about what do you aspire to be? What do you want to be in your life? We want to provide people that are already there, can show you the roadmap, and we want to push you and be a catalyst for you to get there. Um, and so we get a lot of really, really successful people. There was a guy that came up to me at the last one in Santa Clara, and uh, he's running a, a $900 million company and he's sitting in the middle of the, you know, I'm thinking, what is this guy doing? He has, he has a very, very successful company. And he said, you know, I saw the messaging and he said, and I felt like it was very authentic, authentic. And he said, and I just don't have a tribe around me that thinks the way I think, that feels the way I feel. And I just want to be in the middle of it. Um, and he said, that's why he came. And now he's a part of our community and, you know, we interact all the time. And so I think that's the big differentiators. Yeah. And you're making that differentiator happen for so many people in their lives and allowing them to get what they want in the trajectory or divine, as you and I believe, a divine direction towards what they want or better and uh, being able to fulfill that. I always say my frequency is my neighborhood. And every time mm -hmm. I'm blessed to come back, now the pressure's on to have me back because now that you say, well, we only yeah. have these types of people. So <laughs> I think you've been there uh, twice, right? Important. I think you've been to two of our yeah, shows. Thank you. I literally, it's the, I'm uh, literally authentically, it is the best neighborhood and the frequency I am there from dawn to dusk because I just want to hang out with everybody that's there. Not necessarily everybody behind stage, you know, those guys I get to see, uh, but I love hanging out in the hallway and building a crowd of people. Like I was amazed. There's a lot of tremendously successful people in search of more of what yeah. they want and understanding what they don't want. And you're leading the way, Eddie. And I just want to compliment you uh, for doing that. The podcast is amazing, Think Realty. But more importantly, the tour, there is none other. It's like the masters like from my business. It's like the masters of business tours. If you enjoy the best of the best, there's like none other. Led by Eddie Wilson. Thank you so much, my friend, for joining me. This is David Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.